and hello YouTube, this is GS Man with Smart, and I'm going to a brand new video for tutorials of GS. Today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at Adobe Premiere Pro and how sequences can make your editing a lot easier, a lot more organized, and how sequences are the real true power behind Premiere Pro. Now, if you're using an editor like Movie Maker or Camtasia or any other basic movie editor, you basically can't work with a sequence. And a sequence is basically just like any other video editor, a timeline of footage. So for example, this right here, what I have right here, I have a video footage, I have a sequence, I have some audio, I have a, trans I have a video transition. This entire thing is known as a sequence. So a piece of footage on a timeline. Now, when you're working with one of the basic editors, you can only have one of these timelines. So if you're if you only have one audio channel available, guess what? You're only going to be able to work with one audio channel. If you only have one video channel available to work with, you're going to only be able to work with that one video channel. And if you want to make like, you know, specific scenes and, you know, divide those scenes into different uh, timelines to work on to make things a little easier to work with, or if you want to add multiple audio tracks, then you're going to have to render your video quite a few times and rendering can lower your quality eventually. So what Premiere Pro does, it allows you to make sequences to work with multiple timelines and then add each sequence into your main timeline. So for example, uh, this video is a video that I actually worked on yesterday. This is for my gaming channel. And basically what I have done here is this is my main timeline as you see. Um, Here's where I basically have my finished product. I go ahead and add my pre-made intro here. My pre-made intro here. I add my final audio track, which is my music track, the background music. And then I have my sequence here. Now, you don't want to constantly have millions of audio tracks here. As you'll see in this video, I actually have a voiceover and I also have the game's volume. Now I don't want to edit all those audio channels and all those video files in one timeline. Otherwise, I'd have an audio track here, I'd have an audio track here, I'd have an audio track down here, and that just makes it a bit messy and unorganized. So what I've done is to actually edit my voice volume, I have another sequence here. And this sequence basically just has my audio of my voiceover as we see here. Here's my audio voiceover separated into where I want it to appear. And then I'm using this sequence to drop it in here where I can then edit the audio of my voice. And as you see here, I have the video. This is the video sequence. If I double click this sequence, it brings me into the actual video footage where I did my video editing. As you see, I have my text here. I have my video here. Now, if you were to do all of this in just one sequence and in one timeline, which is possible, it is possible to do that, you would have a lot of things in your timeline. You would have the music track, you would have the voiceover, you would have the game volume, you would have the text and the intro slides, you would have the main game footage, you would have the game volume, and then you would have trans your, your video transitioned as well. And having all of that can sometimes confuse you and can also sometimes make your workspace look messy. So Premiere Pro does incentivize you and encourages you to use sequences. And as we see here on the left side, here's where all of your sequences will be. If I double click a sequence, it brings me to it. As you see. And this is in the same uh, spot where all of your uh, video files, your text files and all of that is there. So the main question is now, how can you create sequences? How do they work? And how do you get started with them? Well, now that I've shown you how you can use them and how they're sort of uh, uh, used, I'm going to go ahead and um, the, the, the way to do it is you go up to File here, New, and Sequence. Now what's going to pop up here are several different options. And if you don't know what you're doing, you may press a wrong codec or you may press a wrong um, video format that you may not need so instead of uh, going through this window right here if you'd like to go through this window and if you'd like to go do some research and understand some of these uh, terms you may do so however the easy shortcut is simply just 
to drag whatever piece of footage you're going to edit. For example, say I want to uh, create a 1920 by 1080p sequence. So what I usually do is I usually click a new item down here and I press black video. Then I type in my dimensions. I want to have 1920 by 1080. I want to have square pixels and I want to run at 30 FPS, right? I go ahead and click OK. And that'll make me a brand new black video. Now what you want to do here is drag this over the new item button. And this will create a new sequence. And this sequence will have the same settings based off of the item you created. Now this is also doable through video capture. Be aware that the video captures settings that you recorded in. If you recorded in 720p or if you recorded in 1366 by 768 or if you recorded in 4k if you recorded in 29 fps whatever properties your video has if you drag your video over the new item button here this will create a sequence with those same properties so it act it's actually pretty handy to just drag your footage over the new item button because it'll create a sequence with the matching settings to your footage now, if you want specific settings and specific options for your sequence and for your video that you're creating, then I would recommend looking into some of these sequence um, terms and options. Or if you're just looking to have a specific resolution and a specific frame rate, then do what I do and click a uh, new black video and you can set your resolution, you can set your frames and you can set your uh, pixel ratio. So as you see, uh, this sequence is basically made off of this piece of footage. However, um, so for example, say you did, so say you do what I did, which was 1920 by 1080p. Say you wanted to have that resolution, so you dragged your uh, black video over the new item and it created a new sequence. Well, now we can go ahead and delete this since we don't need that anymore. And say we wanted to drop our game footage in here, we can easily do that now. If you get this pop-up, go ahead and click Keep Existing Settings. The reason why it's doing that is because you see the the settings and options and properties don't match up with the sequence the video has different properties than the sequence does however you can go ahead and force this by right clicking and click scale to frame size and it'll actually scale it up to 1920 by 1080p and then from here on you can do your video footage editing so for example, if here, if in this timeline you just wanted to edit gameplay and you just wanted to edit the audio and you didn't want to deal with any uh, text yet, you didn't want to deal with any additional footage, you didn't want to deal with any audio yet or music, then that's fine. This would be your um, main footage and you can even name this main footage or you could just name it main. This would be your, your main footage. Um, your main sequence where your footage is and if you double click it it'll bring you to it as you see so if you wanted to create now another sequence for say like audio or say you want to create another sequence for another scene in your movie if you're making a movie and you want to have sequences by scenes like scene one scene two scene three you can do that very well too you can name these sequences scene one or scene two and you can then work with with, with a smaller project and you don't have to worry about all these things that you have in your timeline. So say I wanted to make another sequence now. Say I wanted to go ahead and once again, I can use the same black video that I used before and go ahead and drag it over here. That will create me a new sequence. And this one I can name main with voice. So basically this will be my main, which is the footage I edited in here. And then here I want to add my voiceover and do my audio editing. So what I will do here then is how do I get this sequence? How do I get this sequence into here? Very easily, you just drag the sequence into here. And as you see, you can see when, once you have a sequence imported here, it becomes green. And from here on, you can then add your audio. For example, say you wanted to add this right here. You can then add your audio. Now note this, like I said earlier, sequences are only there to help you organize your work to make things look a little more professional and for you to increase your work efficiency to be more organized to work more specifically on 
the main idea of the sequence. In this sequence, you're not going to be worrying about the footage audio. You're not going to be worrying about the video, uh, the video footage because you already worried about that in main here. So having another sequence allows you to focus on a new thing. In here, it's going to be focusing on audio. Here we can do our audio editing. So having multiple sequences will allow you to focus on specific things and keep yourself a little more organized. Then when you have all your sequences done, you can simply go here and say you have your main intro. You can, you can just drag your main intro here and you can just drag all of your sequences in here. For example, I could drag this sequence in here. I can drag uh, this sequence in here. And then from here on, you would just need to go put in background music, say if you wanted to do background music or say if you just wanted to add your um, pre-created pre intro you could do that too. But as you see, sequences are very powerful because they really help you organize your work. I've actually enjoyed editing a lot more and it's made everything a lot easier because whenever I make a new episode of, the, of this little series, this is actually called the Traveler's Tales series on my gaming channel. Whenever I create a new episode for this series, all I have to do is open up this project and follow my follow my sequences here as you see here it tells me even voiceover placement so here I place my voiceover and here it tells me video and text here I work with my my main footage and my text here I'm working with adjusting game volume and adjusting the uh, voiceover volume and here I'm just adding music and then adding my intro so it makes things work a lot easier it makes things flow a lot quicker I don't need to sit down and think about how I'm gonna do something because I already have a preset here I can work with with different sequences so that's pretty much all I wanted to go over today. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it's made Premiere Pro a little easier to use. I know some of the Adobe products can be very uh, terrifying to new users because there's so many new things, a lot of buttons, and sometimes you don't really know what to do. But if you get a hang of some of these things, they really help you. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave them in the comments section below. I'll definitely be there to answer your questions if you have any. And uh, that's pretty much it. We have plenty of other Adobe Premiere Pro tutorials on the channel already we'll be making more in the future also plenty of other software tutorials on the channel such as audacity gimp photoshop lots of the stuff there if you want to check that out you can do so i'm pretty sure it'll be helpful to you and that's pretty much for this video thank you for watching as always and i'll see you guys next time Thank you for watching and I hope this video helped you out in any way. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, it'll really help me out. If you didn't like it, you can leave a comment as well, giving some feedback. If you have any other comments or questions, please leave them in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them. I usually respond to comments within 24 to 48 hours depending on your question and depending on how busy I am. I have plenty of other content on my channel about different software tutorials and how-to videos, so if you're interested in that type of stuff, check it out. And if you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe too, really appreciate it. You can also check out my other channels and social media as shown on the screen right now. And with that, thank you so much everyone. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.